Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about indoor worm farming, um, just on a local scale. So I just have my worm farm here for me to take care of all of my household needs. And today we are going to take a look in on my fabulous, awesome African night crawlers. And uh, a couple of the people that said they wanted some questions answered, wanted to know if uh, they had African night crawlers in a mix, how would they be able to tell them apart from other kinds of worms? Well, this one up here is a, a great example. And you'll see how fast it's moving. And you might be considering thinking that it is a blue worm. Uh, but considering that it's size, that it's probably close to eight inches long, it is in fact an African nightcrawler. They also have this very purple sheen to them, kind of a uh, dark uh, cherry grape juice kind of a color. You don't see that color with any of the you know, European nightcrawlers that would be approximately the same age. Um, those are the only other worms that I have here uh, in my area that would even be close in size to the African nightcrawler. Okay, so let's take a look in on these guys. Last time we gave them some spaghetti or some pasta of some sort. Then we also gave them some of their um, manure. And then we also gave them probably five gallons of bedding. That was four weeks ago. And if you look right now, you're only gonna see about an inch of what we have here in the way of bedding. The African night crawlers are far and wide better at taking care of carbon sources than any of my other worms. It's not even close. So four weeks ago, there was approximately five gallons of bedding that looked similar to this. And four weeks later, we have this. Uh, European night crawlers, red wigglers, blue worms, none of them can do that. And so a lot of times when I question myself, why am I keeping African night crawlers in zone 5A? I look and I say to myself, this was about 15 Amazon boxes a month ago. And now it's well on its way to being a wonderful garden amendment that will improve my soil. So hands down, that is the number one reason to keep African night crawlers. Now, another one of the questions that we had was, you know, before I purchased them the first time, what did I wish I knew? And, you know, some people have problems with them crawling the walls and other people have no problems at all. And so I thought, well, if you give them what they want, then they will not crawl the walls and they won't try to escape and I, I won't have worm jerky. Well, where I live, these guys here, um, whoops, they are very sensitive to vibrations and changes in atmospheric pressure. And here where I live in the middle of the United States, we have a lot of storms and that's year round. We have spring storms, you know, winter storms and summer storms. So these guys are being exposed to atmospheric pressure changes all the time. In addition to that, I live on a busy road where there's a lot of semi truck traffic and those vibrations do go through my house quite a bit. I don't notice it because I'm used to it, but I suppose if it was part of my predator prey, you know, innate uh, behavior, you know, maybe I would behave differently. And these guys sure do. And I, I absolutely saw that um, exhibited when I had some tree removed about a month ago and just the heavy equipment going through my yard and the chainsaws, they actually escaped this bag. Some of them did. I lost about maybe 10. So. That would be one of the things that I think that I would want to know. Now, if I lived someplace that did not have these vibrations or maybe someplace that was um, not very climatically, you know, challenging, may, I don't know, maybe Arizona. If you have African night crawlers and you don't have a problem with them crawling all over the place, please put in the comments below where you live. Um, do you live by a busy road? Do you have a lot of storms? Because I, I'm thinking personally that that is the reason that I've had problems with them running amok. So for my solutions to these problems, I went and got them a urban worm bag. And when that broke, I bought a vermi bag. And the vermi bag has absolutely lasted three times as long 
uh, it was a little bit more money. I think originally when I bought the Urban Worm Bag, it was right at $110. Um, and it was about half the size of this particular bag. And this bag was um, probably $180. But then again, the Urban Worm Bag lasted a year and this is going on its third year. So it's not, it's not a question. If this were to, I don't know, die on me, I would absolutely buy another Urban, uh, a Burmy bag. So next, the, uh, the requirements for the temperature. As you can see, I have a uh, seed mat here and that seed mat keeps these warm worms warm during the winter in my cold climate. And basically that kind of supplements the fact that my house stays at about 65 degrees Fahrenheit during the winter. So let me get these guys stretched out here. And since they've eaten all of their bedding and all of their pasta, I didn't see any leftovers and it's looking a bit dry. I think it is definitely time to get these guys some food found something interesting here. If I can hold still long enough for you to see this, these are mites. And I've often suspected they were the ones that were taking care of the avocados and some of the harder material to make it available for the worms. And right here is a great, um, a great look at a lot of those mites, those dark brown mites. And they are just in there helping, um, breaking up the hard material so that the worms can take care of it later and make it into soil amendments. Uh, when I was, you know, I would say a couple years ago, I really didn't like to see them in my bins. And uh, I would try to actively use neem cake and other things to get rid of them. But nowadays I accept them as part of the ecosystem. So if you watch some of my older videos and you see me using neem cake and stuff, I don't do that really anymore just because they never, now that my bins are established, they never get into a position where they are taking over and uh, being annoying. They don't seem to hurt the worms and they seem to help out the ecosystem. So let me get everything moved over to the side here and then I will get this fed up. So I think we're gonna have to do another harvest here pretty soon because four weeks and they got rid of quite a bit of food. I think that it's time for me to do a harvest next time. All right, so let me go grab them some food. Okay, this is a little over a gallon of food or four liters. Now, if you do not have 10 pounds of worms, you know, maybe don't feed them this much all at once. I feed this heavy because I have so many worms and I have such a large bag. If this were to heat up, my worms can move over to this side or this side or go deeper. If you have a small bin or you don't have enough worms to take care of this much food, don't feed this much. If you only have a pound or two of worms, you know, maybe only feed them a good handful, you know, like this much. I would not feed them, you know, as heavy as I do now if I didn't have as many worms. All right, so that's their people scraps that they're gonna take care of. Now let me get some of the cow manure that I've been feeding them to kind of bulk up the nutrition of their diet. So again, we're going to feed about a gallon or four liters of the manure. And this is to, you know, sub supplement, you know, the food that I give them. African night crawlers that I've had in the past actually got kind of small and skinny. And so um, this is one of the ways that I'm trying to help them stay healthy and retain their weight because with just feeding them people scraps and Amazon, uh, I did not really notice that they were staying to large worms. They got very small and looked more like European night crawlers or red wigglers, at least in size. Okay, so the next addition is going to be the paper bedding. Okay, so this is paper bedding that's been sitting for about a week. It is shredded uh, junk mail and Amazon boxes. And we're going to get them one more gallon. So that is one gallon of food, one gallon of the manure, and then two gallons of the bedding here. And then to top it off to make this more palatable, we're going to give them some of my worm chow. This worm chow, at least for me, is pretty standard. I don't change it a lot. Um, it is alfalfa meal, ground bird seed, flour, regular old wheat flour, and then also cornmeal. 
and it seems to help them out. Like I said, I'm trying to supplement them and also cause that to supplement my garden because the alfalfa meal is usually a pretty good uh, nitrogen source. And so hopefully it will translate to higher quality castings. Okay, let's address the moisture now. This is also one gallon or four liters of aged tap water. And because everything was pretty dry, I'm going to use the whole gallon. Now this will drip out the bottom a little bit, but I do have a mortar tray that's right below this bin that will catch anything if it drips through. If you wanted to go back to looking at the last video, I do show you the underneath side and how I keep that clean in the event that it doesn't absorb and it does drip through. Okay. So that was a lot of additions for this bin, but this is what the African night crawlers in my system, in my particular environment, this is what they seem to be thriving on. So the African night crawlers and the vermi bag have their own playlist. If you want to go have a look at that, I will link that over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.